This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. It's the two o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Like About Science, and I'm standing in for Ethan Allen, our chief scientist. <laughs> <laughs> And today we're talking to Chaminade. We have two uh, faculty from Chaminade, tech faculty. Uh, one is uh, Ryland Chang to my left, and to his left, Mark Speck. They're both um, assistant professors uh, at Chaminade. And we like Chaminade a lot, because Chaminade is out of the box. Chaminade thinks ahead. Chaminade is trying to be sensitive these days under Lynn Babington and Helen mm -hmm. Turner uh, to, um, you know, to um, deal with the marketplace as it exists for jobs and kids and our community, so this is really important. And what they do is really important. So first, <clears throat> you know, I love this question. <laughs> Rylan, who are you? Um, well, I'm Dr. Rylan Chong. I act, I'm born and raised here, um, actually in Hawaii, and from Maui. And I graduated from Maui High School. Um, I came to Shamana, I did my computer science degree there, and um, learned, I specialize in database and learning about data and how to query them and design databases. and you know, from there, I was really interested of um, learning more about data, and what I learned about it was, you know, I got to protect myself. I have to be mindful. We have all this data and what we can do with it. How can I protect myself? So I went off to Purdue um, to pursue my PhD degree, and I was um, in the field of cybersecurity, or uh, the program I was specifically in is called information security. Um, that way, it taught me how to protect data, protect myself, protect. Um, if I had to work for a company or an organization. One goes with the other. Yeah. Data, security, all right. the same now, yeah. Yep. And from after getting my PhD, I realized, you know, now I learn how to do databasing and learn about data, learn how to protect or secure data. The next step was how do you work with large data sets? How do you work with um, data sets that are messy? And so my next step was looking into data science. And I was looking for programs, and Shamana, um, which is my alumni, um, said, hey, we're, we're interested in doing a data science program. Would you want to um, pursue it? And I, I. Sounds perfect. Yeah, it was this a perfect dream. And you know what's nice about Shamana is that I get to work with brilliant faculty like Dr. Mark Speck. Um, I get to work with uh, Dean and Provost Helen Turner. And, you know, I love the vision and mission and goals of the leadership from uh, President Babington to, um, you know, board of directors to even our faculty is just amazing. And what's unique about Shamana is that we're not siloed in our divisions. We, you know, we come together. I worked with the education department and we all come together to move Shamana forward. So this is a great opportunity. I'm, re I'm really grateful and humbled to be here. I've always found Shamana to be um, good tone, you know, good mm -hmm. relations and all that. People friendly working together, I always found that. So uh, before I get to you, Mark, I want to have two questions. Uh, okay. Unpack two questions. What is a large data set? What is that? How large is large? Is it 2,000 2, records, 5,000, 10,000? What is it? How well, big is big? I'll, I'll let Mark also answer because he has a lot of experience in the area, but it ranges and it, it's, there's no definitive concrete definition what large data set could be. Um, it could be terabytes, it could be, I mean, it could be just, you know, maybe um, a, a zillion records or some, some sort, but... We know that's large. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, but, you know, there's different definitions and so large meaning that it's not going to be your traditional, like, um, in my like, Your address book. Right, so yeah. like my dissertation was like about 100 something records. You know, yeah. some would say that's really small, you know. So large data, big data sets, um, there's different definitions. So. Yeah. It's also fields too. Mm -hmm. If yeah. I have a data set with 200 fields, that's you're getting a little on the large side. There, Correct, you know? yeah. Uh, and the other question is messy. What's a messy database? Messy database. So sometimes when you- everything out there. Yep, <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, not having fields so being... what a neat database. <laughs> right, right. But it's basically this, um, sometimes you get data where, the, so I'll, I'll start with clean. Clean data sets is basically you have all the fields filled out and everything looks nice. Messy data sets is we're missing fields, um, missing values, maybe they put the wrong values in, and that's what's considered messy. Makes it a great challenge mm -hmm. to figure out how to, how to put information in where there is no information or correct, correct bad information. Okay, Mark, how much of what Ryland said do you agree with? 
Uh, well, um, if this is on the record, I agree with most of it. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us about yourself. Uh, I came here by way of New Jersey. I was working at Rutgers University. Um, and then I came to UH to get my master's in um, microbiology. Microbiology. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm coming from the life science end. And so that just that ended up turning into a PhD. And but the majority of my work was informatics, bioinformatics, as we're working with a lot of genetic information that we're getting from experimentation. And so we're just always working with data sets. And even at Rutgers, I was working with genetic data sets. Sure. And um, working with those and understanding, okay, all these experiments that we're generating now are just creating loads of data. Uh, and so I would, get, after finish my PhD, I was getting moved on from one data project to the next to the next, never actually doing experiments myself, but getting stuff that other people worked on, helping them clean that up, analyze it, you know, and get something useful out of it, you know, and handing it back to them. So it was more like, I became a utility in that sense. You mean you're helping other people? Yeah, around. yeah, and it was kind of fun because it's always working on something new, you know, it's not, you know, it's like, you know, you get kind of anxious if you work on something for like two years, three years, you want to move on. I get to work on something new after each project, right? Just after I finish that, what's the next thing? I can work on multiple things at once. And a lot of times you start seeing, you know, common patterns, you know, people start needing the same kind of thing. You know, it's, it's data, right? And a lot of times it's data from a lot of different sources. Uh, and so uh, it's never clean. It's not tidy, like these like to say. Um, it's, uh, you know, the, the variables are named improperly. Uh, they're not ordered properly. They're not, you might have the variables as rows instead of columns. You know, mm -hmm. computers like to see things in certain ways, and you've got to see, okay, what, what, is it, what have you done to this? And how much work is it going to take me to, to make it usable, right? And it's like 70% of your work. Uh, so from where I was coming from, um, it was from the life science field, and it's kind of, I've been pushed in this direction. I mean, I've let, I've allowed myself to be pushed. It's a natural progression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's, so it's in like order a, to do the life sciences, you have to know about the data. Yeah. Right, and yeah. And then when you learn about the data, you can apply those rules to other sciences. Huh? Uh-huh, exactly. So it's, it's kind of like a second career arc for me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of interesting because, you know, I get to run into people like Rylan and, you know, um, Helen Turner is just a, an amazing you know, mind out there just for, you know, just coming up with these ideas and helping us think ahead. Right. Yeah. And then our new president, um, uh, Lynn Babington, she's, she's, um, very much into being responsive to what you know the community needs right. in terms of education and how Sh Shamanad can respond to that. Mm. And I know, and I really appreciate that because they give us full access to them. Mm. It's easy for us to ask questions, and we don't have to like go through intermediaries to you know ask uh, you know wh what's the path we need to take or you know we throw an idea to them. Um, they're very responsive to us, so in, in that way, Shamanad has been really good for this kind of um, degree yeah. path. Well, the jury has a question. Um, the jury's question is. You're only allowed to be judge, you can't be both. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. Uh, the jury's question is, you know, at, at, at your UH experience, uh, you were involved in research, right? And yes. Examining uh, yeah. data and, and making algorithms to fix it or get conclusions out of it, whatever. Okay, now you're in Shamanad. It sounds to me like you're more in teaching. You're more in dealing with students. Was mm -hmm. that part of the, the reason for the, tra the transition? The, well, my, the work I do at Shaman, teaching is only, is only a percentage of it. It's, oh, it's tell a, us about how you spend your time. Well, it, right now it's been um, helping create this curriculum, mm -hmm. um, doing research, and then uh, teaching might be between 15-20% of what I do. Uh, it, it helps. What I learn, I get to pass on to the students because it's emerging, right? And so um, it's been useful for us to design certain courses that are going to feed into this data science program. You're going to teach them? We're going to teach some yep. of them. We're we're not going to be the full faculty. It would be that that'd be um, exhausting. Okay. Well, now we're now we're really <laughs> at the threshold of the, of the news. Right. Here. Yeah, but we are the first and among uh, two other faculty. You're the organizers of the, yeah, whole, the yeah. whole degree. So, so right, right. Because yeah. there's definitely things I'm not well suited to teach, and other people are better suited. So I'd rather just stick to what I'm better suited teaching, um, and let other people that are more expertise in those areas. You know, like some of the more advanced mathematics and stuff like that. Um, that we're going to require for them to understand. Absolutely, yeah, needed, so yeah. I'd rather have a mathematician do that rather yeah. than myself. Yeah, ah, but given your flexibility, maybe you'll learn that <laughs> too. <laughs> so um, it's not that you guys woke up one morning with this idea about data science and making a, a program out of it. The administration came up with that. Am I right? And the, and they called upon you to help create this 
whole program. And I guess it's undergraduate rather than graduate, although you do have graduate courses, courses. In, in technology and in a computer science. This is going to be undergraduate then? Specifically undergraduate for now, and then um, maybe in the future we can look at progressing to a graduate program. But um, right now it's just undergraduates. But however, we do have an MBA program that will be incorporating um, some of our curriculum in or courses in their. Um, well, that's very interesting because the B stands for business, mm -hmm. not science. The, the undergraduate program is a science program, but the B stands for making a science graduate into a business. Graduate. Yeah. Correct. And the science aspect of it would be, you know, data science is not just looking at statistics or math, but it's the research process. We do it in our everyday life, and that's part of the science aspect of it. We define a problem. We, um, once we define and identify this problem, we do a literature review, and, you know, and that could be as simple as, like, shopping. You know, we, we want to buy a shirt. What do we do? We go online and look at all the different types of shirts, and that's kind of like our literature review process. <laughs> and then we... Um, I do that on the internet right. all the time. <laughs> My wife does it on Amazon, too. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> and then you design a study from what you found in the literature review. You develop your hypotheses or research questions, and then you, these, um, you conduct the study. You collect the data, which it's all um, overlapping into data science as well. So, you know, there's overlaps in what the science um, term, terminology means. Um, and it can be incorporated in multiple fields, not just business, you can include it in environmental uh, studies. So it's like giving them the tools necessary to be able to go into their interest range. So that's where the, uh, part of the science comes from. Okay, so here we are on day one when the program opens. When is the program opening? This year, next year? 2019, uh -huh. we're gonna start. This year? Yeah, fall. So September, okay. And our goal is to get uh, the first courses started in fall. Okay, yeah. and you, you should, you can, you yeah. must be recruiting people to join this. Right, and right. I told you when we spoke on the phone, I'd really like to be part of this program. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Come around and audit or something, you know, right. just stand by at the back. We also, we, have, uh, we can talk about it a little bit later. We, ha we have a summer um, program that we're, we'll be running as well. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like a four-week crash course. Is that starting this summer? Yeah, it's a partnership we have with um, the Texas Advanced oh, Computing that's Center. That's great. And so they'll be coming over here, and it's a four-week uh, program for about 25 students. Okay, those 25 funded. now. That's camera one over there. And those 25 students are just behind, right behind camera one. Right. And it's day one. You know, you're welcome. Uh -huh. You're giving them the welcoming speech. Okay? What do you say? I said, uh, welcome to the future. Here's your data science route. <laughs> <laughs> You're standing next to him. What do you say? It's camera one. Well, I'm going to add my little twist, <laughs> which is welcome to the family. And, um, <laughs> you know, we're going to have a fun time learning about data. And um, we're going we're gonna to teach you everything we can possibly teach you to get you not only um, ready for your careers, but also ready, you know, if they want to go to grad school or any type of... Um, uh, this helps in life sciences, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and any any interest they want to do. So, <laughs> so uh, okay, you you know, there's going to be a bunch of courses, mm -hmm. um, and I'm one of the 25 or however many are sitting in the room. Yeah, uh, what kind of courses? Uh, what are you going to? How are you going to divide up my time for me? Yeah, so um, it's so our um, when we developed and designed this curriculum or this program, um, we did we did it based on. Look, first off, we have to do it based on our mission and values and goals from our leadership and the Marinus ways at Shamana University. And, um, but to also include um, the development from, you know, researching and talking to um, our industry partners, um, um, some of what other data science and data analytic uh, schools are doing. And from all these factors that we collected, we divided it into about five different areas or components. The first one is we're going to teach you and ha have you master the basics of data science. This includes the introduction of data science, give you kind of a, a boot, uh, boot camp course. You're assuming no prerequisites and no, no significant. Right. We're assuming you don't, you're, you're just a blank straight slate. Straight out of yeah. high school. Straight out of high school. Freshman, yes. Yeah. I, I they do can't play come games. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> so we have the basics. We're going we're gonna to show you what data science is about and get you excited about it. Yeah. The second step will be the advanced courses. So once we get you excited, uh, we teach you the tools in the basic areas. The goal for us is to get you excited and be able to explore it in the advanced um, realm, not just to make it like a challenge, like we, how we hear in advanced courses is like, wow, it's going to be harder or it's going to be more rigorous or it's going to have those components, but we're going to look at it from a perspective of let's explore it. 
And then, so we have those two areas. And then the third area, or the third component, is this, um, the design of um, this curriculum is basically based on project-oriented, meaning that we have a capstone at the end. And right throughout um, the process of getting their degree and taking the basic and advanced courses, they're going to be building their projects from the get-go. Who Something. decides what projects? Well, we, we will work on it with them. Right. So, because part of this is that uh, we're, we're going to have them intern, mm -hmm. like maybe during the summer at that time. Oh, with, you know, with, with companies. With, yeah, yeah, with, with the community. With stakeholders, with the community. Yeah. And then in that way, they can get introduced to what, you know, what's actually out in the wild. What's the real wow, that's stuff? that's great. Because well? we don't want to just come up with some you know, artificial scenario right. because that, that's not going to yeah. be true to don't what they're going to see. Don't forget my suggestion about the traffic controls. You know? Oh, right, yeah. Oh, really? This that would be we'll, a real... We'll, we'll talk to city county about that contribution, one Contribution, yeah. Listen, Jason, it's over. let you in the door, <laughs> it's a gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> so the question I want to put to you, actually, Mark, is what's the hands-on aspect here? Do I walk into a room uh, of lecture? Do I walk into a room of computers? Do I walk into a room of modular discussions? Uh, well, how, how do you teach this stuff? Do you teach it, um, you know, by single, single individuals, by a room full of students, or do you teach it by groups? Well, it's, it'll be groups, and it's going to depend on the particular course because it's not just uh, um, being able to understand and write certain kinds of code and do mm -hmm. mathematics, because uh, when you're in this kind of field, you have to understand ethics, you have to understand um, no, no. What is the the full life cycle of a data set? Um, what is what is important for the people that you're doing the analysis for, right? Um, so you have to learn how to talk to people. You have to learn how to um, explore ideas, mm -hmm. um, and then you know utilize what you've you've heard from somebody, but be able to go back to them and be iterative in your process. So you can't get too um, get too much ownership over what you come up with, right? Because what your people want aren't necessarily what you think that they want, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to interview people and say, okay, what's your problem? Yeah. Show me what you have, yeah. right? Yeah. And they have to learn how to do this. Yeah. And then it's like, well, you know, let me see the data that you have because it might not be appropriate for what you're asking. Yeah. And, you know, and if, if you might say, okay, but it sounds like you might actually want this and let me show you why. You know, so you, you have to have um, some um, form of soft skills to be able to talk to people. So it's not going to just yeah. be Ooh. a lot of this yeah. um, technical heavy type training um, which is important and which we have built into the curriculum. Um, but you know, some of the soft skills stuff is going to be you know, discussion, you're going to have to work with people, and most of the time they're going to be working in groups because you're never often working on your own. Right, okay, right. very valuable. I get three words out of that that I'd like to discuss right after the break. One is um, the, life, the life cycle of data. Hmm, I'd like to know about that. Okay. And the interactive quality, I'd like to know how that works. And I like to know about the, you know, the, the, the practicum aspect, uh, design thinking of, of talking to your client, so to speak, even if you're a student, talking to your client and trying to come up with the real problem instead of the artificial, you know, theoretical one. Right after this break, we're really going to drill down. You'll see. Uh, That's Mark Speck, and to his left, Rylan uh, Chang. Yeah. Yep. We're to my right. From Chaminade. We'll be right back, and we, we'll hear more about the data science program. So um, if you have somebody in high school who's going to college, if you yourself, you're in high school, this is something you really have to hear. We'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m., Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the uh, host of Cyber Underground uh, every Friday here at 1 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then every episode is uploaded to the Cyber Underground that library of shows that you can see of mine on youtube.com and uh, I hope you'll join us here every Friday. We have some topical discussions about why security matters and what could scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you just try to watch my show all the way through. Hope to see you next time on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe. I told you we came back and we came back, right? <laughs> That's uh, Ryland Chong and Mark Speck from Chaminade. 
uh, developing a, a data science program, which sounds very interesting. And so uh, you pointed out to me in the break, there were certain things I missed already. Uh, so <laughs> tell me what we need to cover right now before we go any further. I'll let you. Uh, oh, so we thought it would be useful to show um, some of our um, brochure work on the different degree paths that we have available. Um, the first would be the, the BS in data science. And um, this will be available on our, we have a website, uh, it's called datascience.shamanad.edu. Datascience.shamanad.edu. Yes. Okay. And then uh, this, I, I maintain the website, so this will be published on that website. So all this information will be, be made available there. Uh, and uh, what this shows is, uh, you know, what is our philosophy for going and uh, um, following this coursework and uh, where we think it will take you. Right. Uh, and, um, what, you know, what are the aspects that we're going to be touching on? We're not trying to make computer scientists. We're trying to make data savvy people, right? And it, these this people is, can this be. This is actually much more useful in, <laughs> in the 21st century, yes. Yeah, so we want people to be comfortable taking the data science um, courses, but also be aware that you can apply this to any kind of career. Career. Right? So we want data competent people who can understand how to use data, ask the right questions, or ask people who know how to do certain things and understand what they're getting back. Yeah. Right? Um, there's also other pro programs we're going to be offering that we're working on is, uh, uh, so this is our BS curriculum. Curriculum. Yeah. Right. And so you see it's a 58 credit load. Uh, and just like I mentioned earlier, we have the basics, the advanced, and then we have our capstone project that um, students are going to be taking and throughout the whole process they're going to be building their capstone and also um, gaining experience. Capstone? What's yeah. Capstone? Capstone is a research uh, project at the end of um, okay. their... This is in what, the last year? Yeah, the it was either last so year. So it's like a culmination of everything you've learned. Um, but as Ryan said, has um, talked about in the past is that you know, we, we almost want them to start working on it as they start. Yeah. So, it, so that it's like their baby, right? They're working it's on like it. They're adding parts. It's a degree, doesn't it? Yeah, so they're adding parts to it as they learn about things. You know. At, at, you know, when they get introduced to mm -hmm. the different data sets, they might already have an idea of what they want to do. Yeah. So we want them to be able to work on it as they go. And, you know, and the capstone is kind of the culmination of all yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, I think they'll, they'll, they'll give them something almost like um, you know, a portfolio of work that they've done sure. when they leave the sure. workforce too, right? They can For the resume, don't yeah. you think? Yeah, yeah. their yeah. internships, and they say, okay, it's this like is something they It's like writing down your dissertation. Yeah. Right. It defines you. Yeah, right. and say, so, look, this is what I, I've, I've discovered. This is the best way to sequence our traffic lights right. at the intersection so we don't waste fuel and get people upset because they're sitting in traffic for you too long. You grade them on this? Right, yeah, it's, it's, and it's, called the, um, it's called the J theorem, and this is the, our, our workable theorem, and this mm -hmm. is how it's going to work. Yep, and it's going to give the uh, students um, their experience that you know sometimes jobs ask for that one year experience, two year experience. They're already going to have that experience. Sure, sure. And like for instance, if you decide to hire one of our students, you're going to be familiar with the student. You're going to be able to understand you know what what to ask for from the student, and they're going to be up and running into your either your organization, your company, or even if they want to go grad school. So it's like Mark says, their portfolio, their um, direct acts are direct um, access and opportunity to be interviewed right on the spot, which is working with our mentors or experts. What, what I get out of this is it's, it's not, you're not just doing the, the, the fine work, the embroidery, dealing with small issues or at least code, you know, as a, something that's on your desk that you mm -hmm. drill down and focus mm -hmm. on. You're dealing with big issues, big issues. society in general, data sets. Mm -hmm. and, and in this program, I'm guessing you can correct me, but you learn to have confidence right. in dealing with the large. So, right. so right. you're walking in the doors of a hospital, for example, you know, and they have thousands of patients and thousands of beds and thousands of medical reports and right. diagnostic laboratory and whatnot, and you're confident. Yep. You right. can wrap your mind around all of that. You know how to put that in rows and columns. You know how to search. You know how to find. You know how to yeah. analyze. Right. This is much bigger than just writing code. Right? Yeah, well, that's an interesting segue because one of our um, focus areas is healthcare analytics. Yep. And we also will be offering an uh, MBA, working through the business school, um, that will help, um, you know, if you want to get into business analytics or healthcare analytics, they'll be offering a BA in, um, an MBA in just healthcare management. But also, we want to be able to offer them uh, an MBA in science, technology, and innovation with a healthcare concentration. concentration. Right. So, 
uh, and other there could be other fields, but you know, as an example. Mm, uh, no, that's a good example. Yeah. Because, so you know, you know twenty percent of the gross <laughs> domestic product is is in and growing. Uh, yes, in healthcare. Yeah. So uh, we're not just limited to our department. You know, in terms of this this research uh, this research field, we want to be able to reach out to other you know departments and businesses is, is a really good partner for that. So, kind of thing. are you training kids to? I shouldn't say kids. Is young adults, politically correct. Learners, yeah. young Learners. adults, <laughs> students. <laughs> are you training them to to work here to stay here? Or are you training them for the world? Well, uh, where, we, where do you like to point them on this program? Probably where they find where their mission is going to mm -hmm. be. But we hope that a lot of them will stay because we know that there's a small pool of people that can actually do this kind Will of work. Will you help get jobs? Well, that's where we're hoping that's, our internships will lead to. Right. Oh, so that's an automatic connection. Right. Yeah. And our um, mentorships and through the whole process of them working with some um, expert in the field, right. that this is the direct line. This is a hard one, but you can give me a range if you want. Okay. So I finished the program. I have my BA. I'll ask you about the MBA in a minute. My, my BS, so sorry. Um, and I walk out into the community, whether it's here or the mainland. What kind of salary can I expect to make? Oh, boy. Um, give so me a range. It's okay. It ranges from 80000 to six figures. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a very enticing area. It depends you know? on where you get into. Yeah. You know, it, but yeah, he's right. I've seen anywhere between 80 to 120 within that range. If you go to glass stores, look up data scientists, you're yeah. gonna see you're gonna see some things that are comparable. And that's just starting. So. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm maybe I'll actually matriculate that. <laughs> <laughs> so what about cyber cyber security? Where does that fit in all of this? Is this one of those um, pieces on the curriculum or or could this be um, you know, a significant feature for a given graduate? So basically, it's, it's a complement. That's how we are looking at it. Um, it's in the development work stage. So the idea with this is to, so since they learn about data analytics and um, how to use the tools, but we also wanted them to be mindful about how to protect themselves. So cyber attacks and is growing on an, an incredible scale right now. To protect now. their own work, yeah. effectively, and, and the data they're And the organization they're going to be working for. Yeah, so yeah. it's taking them beyond the technical aspect, but also looking at it from a very, like the social, the economic, and political yeah. perspective. Political. And yeah. from a micro level, protecting themselves to the macro, um, to other macro levels of the business that they're working on, and also maybe the state of Hawaii or the states that they're working, or even the country if they would decide to work for yeah. a um, government agency. Well, I would, if I were an employer or government acting as an employer, I would want nothing less. Mm. I would want somebody to protect my data. And it's more and more important to I me. Mean, to me, this whole thing, if I had to pick one word out of this whole discussion with you both before the show and now, I would say it's relevance you know, to the job market, relevance to the world in which we live, relevance to mm, the economy, the technology. It's, it's creating relevant graduates right. who are in touch. <clears throat> but I haven't forgotten the question I wanted to. Yeah. Wait, can I just <coughs> add one more thing? Uh, we, we are offering scholarships, mm, yes. which is probably pretty important to mention. Mm. Uh, we have funding through an SF IUS grant, and that will um, offer a certain level of scholarship for taking the BS degree in certain fields. And also there's, uh, and that, that will fund up to 10,000 a year in tuition and, and other services. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the four-year guarantee that Shamana gives for degree. And we also have an, a whole scholarship, which um, is uh, granted to us through Kamehameha Schools, which is another um, fully funded tuition. And they can use that not just for data science, but it, it is one of the applicable fields that they can go into for their scholarships. This is great. And that, is um, that and another uh, NSF grant that we have is called NSF Includes, which is helping to fund our, our um, uh, summer in institute program, which is four weeks. So that so the students that come to take that mm -hmm. is also fully funded. So how many people are going to be in this program when you open it up? Well, um, we would be happy with just start with like 15. Um, that would be a, a good number for us to start with. You know, if it, that way, because it, it's new, and so we're going to have to adjust. Um, but it's also not so small where, you know, it's, it's underwhelming. <laughs> right? Because, well, you know, you want diversity of minds, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we want it to be successful. So, you know, yeah. if we get a high level of um, interest, I mean, we're heading in the right path. We're giving right. students what they want. We have to serve the students as well as the community. How can I find out more? How can I apply? Where do I go? Okay, so um, if you go to uh, shamana.edu, um, are the different courses that you can take are available there. The, um, the data science program has a hub page that we use, datascience.shamana.edu, and that um, 
covers most of our data science information, and that will also include information about the degree paths in the summer institutes. So uh, if I come into a program like this, I will stay with my, my cohort, so to speak, throughout my, my time at Chaminade, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like a family. I'll meet the people, yeah. and I'll be with them, and we'll study together. Yep. And right. Oops, but it's not time. necessarily, we're not, we haven't necessarily designed it as a cohort right. experience, you know, like a nursing program, but if you're all coming in the first time at the same time, then yes, it's going to be that kind of experience by yeah. default. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. So go back to my question, yeah. and we have to end after this as we're out of time. Is um, you know you spoke about um, what was it databases that have uh, a life, uh, databases that are interactive, and and databases. Uh, I forget the the third point, but you you gave characterizations to databases. You made them sound like they were living beings. <laughs> yeah. So um, you know what's How does nice. That work? Yeah. So what's nice <laughs> about this um program is that it's not just looking at statistics and analytics and visualizations. There's other realms, and these realms are like machine learning, um, artificial, intelligence, artificial intelligence, right? But I do want to note and, you know, with our students that it's not just learning the technical side of how to build these um, great products and solutions, but to be mindful about what they can do, not only the benefits that it can bring to an organization or to themselves, but also the harms and the groups that it might affect. Mm. So this is, I mean, this is, there's a lot of things happening at, on with this program, but we're both excited to be um, the faculty yeah. for it. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it strikes me that it's sort of like um, when you came over from the life sciences, you brought with you, you know, a, a sense of computer science and, and data science. But it strikes me that if I wrap my, my arms around a database, uh, usually of people, but it could be straight scientific things too, um, if I wrap my arms around a given database of human activity, okay, and then I move on to another enterprise, and there's another phenomenon of human activity there, I will be much better prepared because in understanding this living, breathing, organic database uh -huh. concept, which I'm going to learn in your program, then I will be able to deal with the living, breathing, organic databases in any aspect of, of human conduct. And that's really relevant to the 21st century. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. uh, last question is, what's the connection with this and design thinking out of Stanford? Uh, I think... Uh, you, spoke, you spoke before about how um, the students are, are trained to find out what the real problem is. Right. So you, uh, they don't accept a superficial analysis, they engage with the client about right. what the client really needs. Well, that's where the critical thinking comes in, right? Yeah. So you have to listen to what people are telling you, but you also have to see what it is that they're looking at right. and um, try to you know, uh, understand you know, what, what, where is the disconnect or where is the connect. And that, that can take time. You have to be patient. And so that, um, that design part comes in iteration. You're not going to nail it in the first round. I mean, if you do, that's great. was the other word, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's iterative, it's, um, it's patience, it's communicating, and it's, you know, being able to look what, you, what they have and make, seeing what the limitations are of what they have. What they might get access to is also important, right? right? Yeah. Uh, so, okay, you have this, but can you give us something like this? And also know, okay, it's, not, it's never going to be perfect. The data is never going to be perfect. Right. It's never going to be tidy. It's never going to be Humanity squeaky is never clean. Tidy right. And, and so, no, this is the part that we want people to you know, learn, which is just as important as actually crunching the numbers. Right. Yeah. Wow. It's an expander, a mind expander. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, what I get from what you say is that um, this helps you think. Right. And that goes beyond any particular discipline, just help you think. Aware and be mindful. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. it's what incredible stuff. Well, good luck on the program. Thank you. I like it to see it. I think it's very important to our community. Thank you, Rylan. Thank appreciate you, Jay. it coming down. Thank you, Mark, Jay. Mark, really appreciate it coming down. Good work for Shamanar. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.